Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Donald Trump's disgraced former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, is giving Congress damning evidence about the president, branding him a racist, a con man and a cheat. Cohen, who worked for the president for more than a decade, is about to start a three-year jail sentence for lying and fraud. He's told Congress that the president had made racist remarks and he spoke of hush money paid to a porn star with whom he'd had an affair. He's also claimed that Donald Trump had known in advance about a leak of emails that would damage his rival Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election. From Washington, Nick Bryant reports. Michael Cohen once said he'd take a bullet for Donald Trump. But on Capitol Hill today, the president's former lawyer, his personal Mr. Fixit, carried out a political hit job on his one-time boss. I am ashamed that I chose to take part in concealing Mr. Trump's illicit acts rather than listening to my own conscience. I am ashamed because I know what Mr. Trump is. He is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. One of his most explosive allegations concerned this man, Roger Stone, a Trump ally and self-styled political dirty trickster, recently indicted by the special counsel Robert Mueller. During the 2016 presidential campaign, he claimed Donald Trump was told ahead of time that WikiLeaks and its founder Julian Assange were about to leak emails that would hurt Hillary Clinton. Those emails were hacked by the Russians. Mr. Stone told Mr. Trump that he had just gotten off the phone with Julian Assange and that Mr. Assange told Mr. Stone that within a couple of days there would be a massive dump of emails that would damage Hillary Clinton's campaign. Mr. Trump responded by stating to the effect, wouldn't that be great? Michael Cohen also claims Mr. Trump told him to pay hush money to the porn star Stormy Daniels to cover up an affair with a billionaire in violation of campaign finance laws. He showed the committee the personally signed check the president had sent him in reimbursement. The president of the United States thus wrote a personal check for the payment of hush money as part of a criminal scheme to violate campaign finance laws. So what of the burning question of whether there was collusion between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin? Questions have been raised about whether I know of direct evidence that Mr. Trump or his campaign colluded with Russia. I do not. And I want to be clear. But I have my suspicions. President Trump is half a planet away in Vietnam for a nuclear summit with the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. On camera, he remained tight-lipped about the fire and fury coming from his former lawyer back home. But on Twitter, he claimed Mr. Cohen, a convicted felon, was lying to reduce his prison term. Now, this has been some of the most dramatic political theatre that Washington has seen in decades. And what the Republicans on the committee have tried to do is to trash Michael Cohen's reputation, reminding viewers that he's about to start serving a prison sentence. And one of the things he was found guilty of was lying to Congress. But what they've been less effective at doing is to challenge and undermine the allegations that he has made against Donald Trump. Now, Michael Cohen didn't produce a smoking gun today, proving collusion between the Kremlin and the Trump campaign. But what he did do was direct an awful lot of fire at Donald Trump that has the potential to seriously wound the president. Nick Brown in Washington, thank you. So there was explosive testimony from Donald Trump's former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, today, as he testified to the House Oversight Committee on Capitol Hill. The man who once said he would take a bullet for Mr Trump, firing back with both barrels, with every member of the committee seizing their chance for a moment of glory too. Here's our Washington correspondent, Kylie Morris. Over the past two years, I have been smeared as a rat by the President of the United States. The truth is much different. And let me take a brief moment to introduce myself. My name is Michael Dean Cohen. In truth, he needed little introduction. The appearance by Michael Dean Cohen, the president's personal lawyer and fixer before the House Oversight Committee, one of the most anticipated of the Trump era. 
For the Democrats, Cohen is the insider who flipped with damaging evidence to divulge about the president's actions in the White House and before. Raise your right hand. The Republicans make the case his oath is meaningless. He's a liar, convicted of deceiving Congress, crimes for which he's about to begin a three-year prison term. But the Democrats don't care. They don't care. They just want to use you, Mr. Cohen. You're their patsy today. They got to find somebody, somewhere, to say something so they can try to remove the president from office. His opening testimony was delivered with puritanical zeal by the newly disbarred Mr. Cohen. He is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. In his evidence, the hang dog attorney spoke to Donald Trump's misdeeds, starting with the hush money paid to Stormy Daniels, who alleges she had an affair with the president, which he denies. He also denied in April last year that he knew anything about the payment made by Mr. Cohen. Today, Michael Cohen presented in evidence to the committee a cheque which he said the president personally signed, drawn from his own account while in office, to reimburse him in part for the hush money Mr. Cohen had paid. Then there was this. A lot of people have asked me about whether Mr. Trump knew about the release of the hacked documents, the Democratic National Committee email, ahead of time. And the answer is yes. Michael Cohen revealing under oath that Roger Stone had briefed the president on the phone that he'd been in touch with Julian Assange and a damaging email dump was on its way. Mr. Stone told Mr. Trump that he had just gotten off the phone with Julian Assange and that Mr. Assange told Mr. Stone that within a couple of days there would be a massive dump of emails that would damage Hillary Clinton's campaign. Mr. Trump responded by stating to the effect, wouldn't that be great? WikiLeaks has responded by denying there was ever a phone call between Roger Stone and Julian Assange. Another overheard conversation conveyed by Mr. Cohen to the committee suggests the president was aware his son had arranged to meet with Russians offering dirt on the Clinton campaign in the Trump Tower meeting of June 2016. And I recall Don Jr. Leave, leaning over to his father and speaking in a low voice, which I could clearly hear, and saying, the meeting is all set. And I remember Mr. Trump saying, okay, good, let me know. What may disappoint the Democrats today is the failure of their star witness to confirm the president told him to lie to Congress. Instead, the president's former fixer says Mr. Trump expected him to lie, and he did, about Donald Trump's continued negotiations over a Trump Tower in Moscow throughout his presidential campaign. He would look me in the eye and tell me there's no Russian business, and then go on to lie to the American people by saying the same thing in his way he was telling me to lie. The legal consequences of this testimony from the president's former right-hand man will be decided in a realm beyond today's hearings. But this has been a damaging and grubby portrait of the leader America elected to its highest office. OK, let's move on to the United States now. And if it was a courtroom drama, it would be frankly hard to believe. A former lawyer and fixer to an American president condemning his old boss as a racist, a con man and a cheat. A man who ran for president, never expecting to win, and who paid off a porn star after he had taken office. Michael Cohen has already lied to Congress once and is going to jail for it in a few months. But he was back today to try to explain why he did it out of misplaced loyalty to President Trump. He said. The president's out of town for one of the biggest political showdowns since he took office. Do you swear or affirm? His former lawyer, Michael Cohen, vowing to tell Congress all about his dealings with his former boss. He is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. You trash the president of Trump loyalists point out he's a convicted liar, given a three-year sentence. You're a patholog pathological liar. You don't know truth from, from, tr from falsehood. <laughs> Sir, it's I'm sorry, now. are you, you, know, are you referring to me or the president? Yeah, hey, this is my time. <laughs> are you referring when to me or the president? When I ask you a question, yes. I'll ask for an answer. Sure. 
On the other side of the world, the president was trying to pull off a nuclear deal with North Korea, with no time for questions about Cohen. For a decade, Michael Cohen was Donald Trump's fixer, paying hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels to stop her talking about an alleged affair with the president. Today, he produced a check signed by Donald Trump in 2017 while he was president. The president of the United States thus wrote a personal check for the payment of hush money as part of a criminal scheme. He also lied about it to Trump's wife, Melania. And lying to the First Lady is one of my biggest regrets because she is a kind, good person, and I respect her greatly. They'd queued for hours to witness his first-hand testimony. Those who got in heard allegations that the president was a racist. And while we were once driving through a struggling neighborhood in Chicago, he commented, that only black people could live that way. And he told me that black people would never vote for him because they were too stupid. This is box office, and there's no doubt that Michael Cohen's description as a president, as common liar and cheat, is highly politically damaging. But the critical question is, does it amount to those high crimes and misdemeanors that would lead to impeachment? WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. During the 2016 campaign, Cohen claimed he overheard Donald Trump being told WikiLeaks were about to release emails. Within a couple of days, there would be a massive dump of emails that would damage Hillary Clinton's campaign. Mr. Trump responded by stating to the effect, wouldn't that be great? Despite a day of embarrassing revelations, still no obvious evidence of the most serious allegation, collusion with Russia. Juliet Bremner, News at 10, Washington. Rarely have Capitol Hill and the American people heard such explosive testimony about a sitting president. Michael Cohen, for almost a decade, Donald Trump's lawyer and fixer, now a convicted felon, has sought to implicate Donald Trump in the WikiLeaks dump of Democratic National Committee emails hacked by the Russians and released to do maximum damage to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Trump has denied any involvement and denied, too, that he ever talked to his longtime advisor, Roger Stone, about the WikiLeaks dump. Cohen directly contradicted Trump's version of events, and this is the crux of the Mueller investigation. Paul Wood was in Washington to watch the hearing unfold. As he came before the House committee, Michael Cohen was a changed man, humbled, broken almost. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? He was unrecognizable as the swaggering lawyer who'd been Donald Trump's fixer and bagman for a decade. I am ashamed of my weakness and my misplaced loyalty, of the things I did for Mr. Trump in an effort to protect and promote him. I am ashamed that I chose to take part in concealing Mr. Trump's illicit acts rather than listening to my own conscience. I am ashamed because I know what Mr. Trump is. He is a racist, he is a con man, and he is a cheat. Anybody who's seen Michael Cohen recently will tell you that he's burning with anger over having to take the blame for crimes he says were instigated by Donald Trump. One of those crimes, he says, took place right here in the White House. He claims that Trump, as president, repaid him cash he'd given to a porn actress called Stormy Daniels to buy her silence during the election campaign. Stormy said she'd had an affair with Trump. Cohen paid her $130,000 not to go public, handing over the money two days before voting began. He's going to jail for a campaign finance violation. And he told the committee a paper trail led directly to the president. He was talking about a check signed Donald J. Trump, August 2017. Yet other than your testimony here today, there is absolutely no proof that those specific payments were for those specific purposes. Is that correct? It's my testimony that the check that I produced as part of this testimony, the 35,000 and then the second check 
that's signed by Alan Weisselberg and Don Trump Jr. were two checks out of the 11 that were meant for the reimbursement of the hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. Republicans adopted a liar, liar, pants on fire strategy. No one can see this guy as credible. He will say whatever he wants to accomplish his own personal goals. That's why that's important to you, to look up here and, and look at the old adage that our moms taught us, liar, liar, pants on fire. Mm. No one should ever listen to you and give you credibility. But it would be interesting to Remember see, the I, campaign? I tell you this. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Trump knew, Cohen said, from his advisor of 30 years, Roger Stone. Stone had phoned Trump with a tip-off from WikiLeaks. But that doesn't mean the Trump campaign was conspiring with Russia, which is blamed for stealing the emails in the first place. A conspiracy or collusion would take something more. Knowing how Mr. Trump operates with his winning at all costs mentality, do you believe that he would cooperate or collude with a foreign power to win the presidency? Is he capable of that? It calls on so much speculation, ma'am. It would be unfair for me to. I understand, give an but you have a that. tremendous amount of experience. Given Mr. What Trump you today. is all about winning. And and he will your, do what is necessary and in within your which opinion, to win and experience, would he have the potential to cooperate or collude with a foreign power to win the presidency at all costs? Yes. In fact, Michael Kerryan had very little to say about collusion in this hearing, except to say, under penalty of perjury, that he had not gone to see agents of the Kremlin in Prague, as is claimed in the famous dossier written by a former MI6 officer, Christopher Steele. This was a hearing about sex, sleaze, and secret payoffs. Today, it was not about Russia. Today's events unfolded as the president held his much anticipated talks with North Korea. The White House, taking the same line as the committee Republicans, called Kerryn a disgraced liar and a convicted perjurer. For much of what he spoke about, it comes down to his word against the president's. It's not at all clear which one the American public will believe. Hollywood will joining us now to discuss all this is Paris Denard, a Republican communications strategist who's a supporter of President Trump, and Lisa Bloom, a U.S. civil rights attorney who represented women who said they had sexual misconduct allegations against the then presidential candidate, Donald Trump. Good evening to both of you. First of all, Paris Denard, Michael Cohen said that Trump was a racist, a con man, and a cheat. Do you know for a fact that he's none of these? I can only talk about the person that I know that uh, the candidate Donald Trump and President Donald Trump has never, in my opinion, uh, in, those, in the opinion of those who have known him outside of Michael Cohen's uh, convenient testimony, uh, to be anything but uh, an upstanding gentleman who has done nothing that has come close to be looked upon as being racist. Uh, and so I don't find him to be a racist. I wouldn't support a racist. I know Lynn Patton wouldn't support a racist. I know Katrina Pearson wouldn't work for a racist. And the things that he's done for the American people, especially the black community, have been profound, significant, and impactful and positive. So Donald Trump is no racist. Well, Lisa Bloom, I mean, the Democrats have had their day, but was there anything that actually did any real damage to Donald Trump? Oh, they did a great deal of damage because they very intelligently laid the foundation for future investigations and future criminal referrals. Not only do we have a lot of direct connections to Russia now, but we have the predicate for various financial crimes. I think most importantly, Michael Cohen coming forward with checks showing that he was reimbursed for those payments to Stormy Daniels. That's very important because those were clearly intended to influence the election and therefore they were required to be disclosed in 2017 by Donald Trump. Well, they were not disclosed. Well, and once Trump was president, he is then sending checks out on this. Yes, we're going to come on and talk about what was available to us on Russia or not available to us as a result of Michael Cohen's testimony. But first, on that question, uh, Parasinard, of those checks that were actually displayed uh, in front of the politicians, you know, was that a bang to rights? 
Look, at the end of the day, the president was uh, paying his attorney. He was Michael Cohen at that time was his personal attorney, and there's no there's no reason to believe that they those weren't checks uh, for uh, a, a retainer or whatever they were they were they were for. They weren't illegal. Uh, what pr the president was doing from his own personal funds after becoming president of the United States to Michael Cohen uh, was not an illegal act. And, and, and that's the, and at the end of the day, that's what the American mm -hmm. people saw. The American people also saw that there was no collusion, no connection to Russia as it relates yes. to influencing well, the 2016 election. We did not see that in the testimony. Well, we did Lisa not Bloom, see that. That's right. There was no direct well, evidence that Trump colluded with Russia. And also that w WikiLeaks and uh, Roger Strode also uh, deny any email dump. Let's be quite clear that uh, Roger Stone and WikiLeaks deny any email dump as well. Yes, listen, uh, I'm an attorney. I live in the real world. Michael Cohen did not have a retainer. Michael Cohen got an additional $130,000 from Donald Trump after he paid $130,000 to Stormy Daniels. As an attorney, I can tell you, I don't pay my clients checks, uh, uh, debts. It doesn't work that way. You know, Michael Cohen set up a sham corporation, he paid the money to Stormy Daniels, and then he was reimbursed by Donald Trump and his companies while Donald, Donald Trump was president. Michael Cohen is going to prison for that campaign finance violation. Mm -hmm. And you mean to tell me that just coincidentally the numbers add up to $130,000 bonus for Michael Cohen from Donald Trump in the following year? It doesn't pass the smell test. It, it doesn't pass the well, smell congratulations, test, Congratulations, Denard. You know, well, you know what? Congratulations, Lisa, on being an attorney. But today, after looking at Michael Cohen, who was an attorney who was disbarred, who lied uh, before the Congress uh, and, and committed all kinds of acts, if you just look at what the Southern District of New York, the state's attorney, said about Michael Cohen and his deliberate uh, actions of, yes. of lying and being a con man, mm -hmm. that is not speaking well for an attorney. But so what, I don't care that but, you're an attorney, but the American people saw the fact that this man is a premeditated liar, a crook, and someone you cannot listen to because he has led well, a you, double you know life what? at doing well, these well, things well, for, his, Lisa, for his own Lisa personal Bloom, just gain. Just wait a minute. On, on this question, uh, um, Paris, uh, it was fair to say that the Republicans attacked Cohen and his character, but not necessarily what he was saying about Trump all the time. It was much more uh, a going after his character. Would you agree with that, Paris? Well, I think that's what you, it wasn't just the Republicans, it's what the Southern District of New York state's attorney said about Michael Cohen, and I quote, it said, uh, his naivete, carelessness, misplaced loyalty, or political ideology were uh, knowing calculated acts. He said he did this to profit personally and build his own power and enhance his level influ of in influence. He said he was marked by a pattern of deception, mm -hmm. marked by a pattern of deception, permeated his own personal life, per professional think? I mean, life. We, you, you, that he is was his fact. attorney for almost 10 years. <laughs> Why do you think Trump would keep someone so close to him, his personal attorney, for all that time if he thinks he's a liar and a cheat and a no-gooder and so and forth? And not just Michael Cohen. It, Everybody he surrounded himself with has now been indicted, convicted, or going true. to prison. That's I mean, not true. Poor Donald Everybody Trump that was may around just the have the worst. That's if not I true. may, Lisa, if I may speak without factual. interruption, hang I know on, you want to Hang on, I just want to ask you, I want, I want to Lisa, ask you if this will go down in history. You know, whether you think good or ill of what happened today, uh, Paris Denard, do you think this will go down in history as a significant moment in the Trump presidency? I think this will go down in history as a significant moment in the, in the, in the United States of America uh, because we saw the Democrat Congress overreach and, and, and be just purely political harassment, presidential harassment. When the president is overseas right now trying to have peace uh, around the world in the North Korean peninsula, this Congress decides under Democrat leadership to do something at a political theater and a circus while the president is gone overseas trying to maintain peace. That is shameful. It's well, embarrassing. Lisa, just and to we're finish up with you, this. you have to admit there's nothing that puts uh, uh, Donald Trump any nearer impeachment after today, is there, really, truly, as an attorney? I, I, I don't agree with that at all. I think we've heard a lot about him inflating his finances, deflating his finances when it served him. Uh, there's a lot of evidence about the conversations with, connect, with Russia and connecting the dots. But, you know, this is a long process. It involves getting to the evidence. I, I, your other guest wants to attack me for being an attorney for some reason. Uh, Republicans always just want to go on the attack. Listen, in real courtrooms every day, prosecutors get convictions based on testimony by people like Michael Cohen, people who are convicted liars.
and they do it by connecting the dots and looking at documents. It is true that he Thank is convicted you. of lying. Thank and you, so we Bush. shouldn't just take his word for things, but he has produced solid evidence in support of what That's he's saying. That's correct. Thank we you, you very much. I'm afraid we could probably do the whole program of this, but thank you very much anyway.